Behind me is pretty much uh, an amazing home-built legend aeroplane. Um, it's a two-third scale P38 Lightning, all in aluminium, designed by a guy called Jim O'Hara. Uh, it was his complete Odyssey project. Uh, he finished it. It didn't really, it was never really in the public eye. Um, and then when Jim passed away, he left it to his nephew, William Presler. William has fulfilled a dream and brought it to Oshkosh. It was invited here by EA many years ago. William's made that happen. Uh, the aeroplane is uh, it's powered by two uh, 210 horsepower Continental engines, basically out of the, out of the Seneca. Uh, cruises around about 140, 130, 140 knots, approaches 65 knots. Um, the two guys who've flown it say actually it handles pretty nicely. It's a, a friendly aeroplane, but I think as you'll hear a bit later, William describes flying it as just a huge responsibility. Um, but just, it's just, I'm not sure there'll ever be an aeroplane that one man will build or one person will build that embodies so much effort uh, and just sheer perseverance. William Presler, fantastic to see you here with the two-thirds scale P38 Lightning. Tell us a little bit about the story behind how you ended up here with it. Well, this has been, so I have no idea what's coming next for this plane, but I can tell you this is, in my view, the, the culmination of a long and beautiful story to get it here, which feels so much like home in a lot of ways um, for this aircraft. My uncle um, started this plane, gosh, it would have been somewhere around 1950 when he first built his um, first P-38 out of balsa wood <laughs> as a 14-year-old. Yeah. You know, he grew up in the shadow of World War II and the grandeur also of World War II because while yeah. it was a dark time, it was also a time of epic heroism. Yeah. And yeah. the P-38 represented so much of that. And in his mind um, was just a long, long dream um, as a child and then as a, as a um, engineer, aeronautical engineer, as a rocket scientist, yeah. as a pilot later in life, he became a pilot later in life. He started building in 1994 on this one. Yeah. And um, in um, 2023, I became its caretaker. Um, he passed in December of 22 yeah. and had wanted me to have it. He put, he and Aunt Mitzi put in excess of 25 years into this plane. I mean, certainly he designed it, he engineered it, and he did the craftsmanship, but she was so much a part of that story too. And yeah. um, they flew together in it. She sat in that back seat it, there. It, it is two seats. Isn't it, it is. It? Yeah, tiny, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remarkable. Yeah. She was not a big person, no. to say the least. Yeah. And um, it was so the cockpit was built around them. Yeah. So, so in, while they were still in New Orleans, he was a professor. Uh, a t he was tenured at Tulane there, and while they were still there, he built the wooden cockpit in their, you know, in, the, in his garage. He was a craftsman in wood as well as metal. Yeah. Um, but he built the cockpit that would fit them and then basically scaled the plane around that. Right. It was, so he, he built it and he kind of flew it and it was a legendary aeroplane really, wasn't it? Because people knew about it, but it never really went very far. Yes, it was the, it was the secret that some people knew of. Yeah. And you know what's so interesting? When I came home with my Myers 200 to, to yeah. Lebanon, um, Myron, who is the, who, who's been an EAA president and such, he was hearing the newsletters, he was reading the newsletters of other chapters, because yeah. that was a Poveresny thing. They, they, the EAA at that time wanted the, the presidents to have access to the other president's notes. Yeah. So anyway, I fly this thing home and I said, you know, my uncle, he also, he built a plane. He built a P-38 Lightning and Myron was like, that's your uncle? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, what? Um, so yeah, the, those that were in the know knew about it, yeah. but, but he, it, yeah. It had a real mystique about it, didn't it? Such a mystique, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. And obviously now you have it, you've done, it's, you've done a huge amount of work to it to get it flying. Yeah, and, and my, well, and my team has done a huge amount of work. Yeah. And Steve Michael came down, he and his wife Rebecca came down 
for three weeks just to get it ready to fly to yeah. where we could work on it. Yeah. I mean, there's so many people who have, who have put so much into this plane and it, it's just, I just can't even tell you how appreciative I am. And like to get this thing in here and and for let to let people see what not just Velar Avionics did because we just we okay we put a year in it yeah. and a buku of money but yeah. Yeah. that's nothing in comparison to what Jim and Mitzi did yeah. and for them and people to have a chance to see just I mean the craftsmanship on the nose cone it, alone the whole, just on that the whole airplane is just it every detail is is perfectly it's executed just beautiful and I, obviously the the big deal with you bringing it to Oshkosh is you're fulfilling Tom Pobresny invited Jim to bring the in airplane in 2009 yeah 2009 yeah. And yeah. actually, never, that never transpired. So you, you've, you've closed the circle, haven't you? Yeah, that's exactly right. It's a, it's, it's fulfilling that. And then, so what happens next? I don't know. And people have asked me that. And I'm like, I don't know. shit, I don't know. I've been so worried about getting it here, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's here, and it just feels so great. And it is that, like, that, you know, that full circle yeah. now of having it here. Because Jim was so involved in the local EAA chapter. Yeah. In San Angelo, he was a he was a president of the chapter there. He taught courses, um, not just AMP courses, but building courses, and he was so involved in the AA. But he was busy building this plane and didn't have time to bring it all the way up here, and, and not even really had time apparently to fulfill Tom's request, Tom Poberesny's request to yeah. come down and see it. Yeah. He just he was busy. He was just busy. With yeah, he was busy with this. Yeah. So you're you're at the point now you, that is like the, it's the end of the beginning, isn't it? It's, it you're, is. You're, you're yeah. Gonna, you're going to write the next chapter very quickly. Just sum up what it's like to fly. Well, it's it's terrifying <laughs> um, because um, not because there was anything it's, wrong. No, yeah. It's just such a huge humbling responsibility to think that someone who is who is performing. I mean, this is a work of staggering genius, in my opinion. It is yeah. a work of staggering genius, yeah. as a, from an engineering perspective, a design perspective, and a craftsmanship perspective. To have one person, and Aunt Mitzi, like supporting in so many ways. She was like the the you know executive of so many functions inside of um, their teamwork, and and. You know, but but the the level of performance that he did in those three primary areas, in excess of 25 years, I don't believe could be replicated. And to have that responsibility of getting it here and not putting it down in a field, you know, like um, it just it it was just. So in that regard, it was terrifying. I don't mean like I was terrified for my life. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah. for just like, I want to get it here. And I, and I candidly, I'm not sure if this is the type of thing to say in an interview, but I, I parked it in front of the, the EEA chapter here, was so gracious to host us um, and put the plane up to get it ready for the show, to have it here before you know, all the madness started, yeah, right? Because yeah, I didn't want to fly no, in then. No, no, yeah. So, but when I pulled it up in front of the hangar there, I just wept. I, I just wept, <laughs> just, just like, oh, I'm here, you know, we did our job, yeah. and, right. and the Velar team, like, I mean, I don't, you see, they're still, like, polishing, Polishing. they're yeah. still, they're still working, they're amazing, Josh and Brandon and all their, I mean, they're amazing, yeah. It's yeah. magnificent. William, thank you for your time, and I hope you have an amazing Oshkosh. I hope the judges are very kind to this, because oh. it really deserves it. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I appreciate the sentiment. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That really means a lot to me. I mean that, so.